Okay, so what's the problem about? What's the decision here? Okay, okay, which project to choose to be found? Okay, um, after chapter five, this uh, coming up with this decision variable may, should not be very difficult um, because we already encountered some problem with the binary, um, binary result, right? Like in the shortest path problem or even that uh, complex uh, equipment replacement problem, the result is uh, zero or one, say choose or not, right? So in this case, it's the same. We're looking at those five, six projects to say, okay, should it be chosen or not? As it indicated in the problem, it's really clear that uh, they are unable to undertake all six projects, so they can only choose from them. And uh, even though the decision is which ones to choose, we translate them into whether to choose X, uh, project one or not, whether to choose X, uh, project two or not, whether to choose uh, project three or not. Okay. So we'll have those x1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 representing whether to choose a project or not. And uh, for binary variables, let me just uh, use this here. For binary variables, we usually define them in this way. Okay, so this is the, the, the standard way to define the binary variables. Say x i equals to be one if project i is selected equal to zero. Otherwise, okay. The other way to do it would be x i represents whether to select project i. One means yes. Zero means no. Okay, so when you decide, when you dis, uh, define the decision variables, so which should be binaries, um, either way works. Okay, then we go back to look at the objective function. Okay, so we have the decision variables already. Did they say objective function somewhere? What's the objective? What's the, what's the objective usually to, to carry out some project? To make money, right? Okay, so what's the, what's the money making part embedded in this table here? Expected net present value, right? Okay, so expected net present value. And uh, each of those different projects have different expected net present value. Summarized. Okay, even though they didn't say what's the objective from a common sense. Okay, especially you guys are engineering management students. You know that we choose those R&D projects trying to maximize expected MPV. Okay. Then, how do we write the objective function? Okay, how do we know which ones are included? Say, for example, if x1, if project 1 is chosen, okay, then this $141,000 will be included in the total MPV, right? If it's not chosen, then it will not be included. Same for the expected MPV for the other projects. If, say, project 5 is chosen, then this uh, 265 will be included in the total MPV. If it's not chosen, then it won't. So use this page here. Let's see what's my color. Okay, so we want to maximize, uh, I just put it here, total MPV. And uh, the N total MPV can be so potential will be this plus this plus this plus all the way to 170. Uh, except that we don't know which ones should be included. Okay, if the project is chosen, then this should be included. It, if it's not chosen, it should not be included. Now how do we write the objective function? 
using that decision variable that we define, right? We define, say, okay, x1 being 0 or 1. If it's not chosen, its value will be 0. So if we multiply these two values here, this 0 will cancel out this uh, MPV value. So if project 1 is not chosen, which means x1 will be equal to 0, then its MPV will not be included in this total sum here. Okay, but if it is chosen, then 1 times this 141, it will be included. Does that make sense? Same for x2. Okay, if it is chosen, then 1 times this. If it's not chosen, then MPV will not be included. Okay, so object function will be to maximize 1 x141 one one times x1. Keeping in mind that x1 will be a binary variable, will be binary value 0 or 1. Okay, plus 187 x2 plus. plus 1x3 plus 83x4 plus 265x5 127x6 okay so you can see here we, we, we kind of like did a function that uh, should be expressed using an if then if then else several if then else statement right if we don't use this binary variable here, we would say, okay, the maximized MPV will be if project one is chosen, then it's a one for one plus. If X2 is chosen, then we need to include this one. If X3 is chosen, we need to include this one. Here we use the binary variable to turn the value on or off. Okay, if we turn it on, we, that means X value will be one. We include it. If we want to turn it off, we don't want to include it then x value will be 0. Okay, so binary variables are very helpful. And then subject to the constraints. So the constraints are that uh, if you invest in a certain R&D project, for example, project 1, from year 1 to 5, in each year, some investment will be required. Okay. You can't just say, okay, I invest in the first three years and suddenly in four years I run off money. I cannot fund this one. Then all those money will be wasted. Okay. If you choose a project in this in this problem, okay, of course there were other methods that say, okay, you have you can cut a project if it's not profitable. Um, say in the second year you do a stage gate model that evaluate the project's return. Okay. Or we, or we have like options choice. Okay, uh, that's something that we, we will cover in um, another decision making class. But here we'll just assume that once you choose to invest in the project, you are committed to the project in the next five years. Okay, then the company has uh, $250,000 available to invest in new project, which means currently, okay, in the first year, it has uh, 250 here. So for anyone that's uh, chosen, the required investment that's going to happen in first one should not exceed this uh, 250, right? Because that's the money we have now to invest in the first year. And if you add up all of those ones, it exceeds 250. And that's why they said they don't have money to fund all the six. Okay. Same for 75,000 for year two. Okay. 75 here. And uh, 50,000 for year three, four, and five. Okay. So that means uh, you don't only need to satisfy requirement for the first year, which is 250. But all the following years, the project that you selected, the, 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 the amount of capital required for the project that you selected should not exceed the total available. Okay, so for the first year, mm, let me put it here, 
should not the amount of uh, capital inquire requirement should not exceed two fifty. But uh, how do we know if x if seventy five should be included? The same way, right? How do we know if we need to include this in year one's budget? If you select project one, right? So if you select project one, that means your X1 will be one. So it will be included in the budget. If you don't select it, it will be zero. So this 75 value will be turned off. Okay. 90 X2, 60 X3. 30x4, 100x5 plus 50x6. So all the value from this column here. And we have all those x values being binary, 0 or 1. 0 then will cancel the value out. It's the same. It's consistent all the way. Okay. From whether to include that NPV in the objective function and for all the years, whether that budget, whether that capital investment is needed to be included in the total budget, they are consistent. If x1 is zero, that means it will be all zero here. And so the NPV will not be included and the requirements for this uh, capital will not be included. If it's one, then all of them will be included. Okay, so the objective function we already defined the constraints will be in this format. Okay, so that will be from year one to five. And we use all the binary x variables to turn on or off those uh, capital investments required for all the project. And the right hand side will be uh, the, the, the capital uh, budget available. Then we need to, even though you specify the decision variable will be zero or one, you need to add in the constraint part, okay, or well, xis must be binary, okay. And uh, in Excel, you do this by adding a constraint, say add, I just assume, okay. Here, say if those decision variables need to be binary, so you will stack this one, b, i, n, so it will specify the decision variables will be binary, will be zero or one value. Okay, and you don't need to select that integer because the binary is already specified. Okay, cancel. This is how to specify. So with this, with this problem, we introduce uh, the use of binary variables as a special integer constraint. Okay. Any question for this problem? When do we know whether to use a binary variable, the zero or one? Um, for this problem, it's like uh, it kind of indicates so whether to choose to, to choose it or not. It's kind of like in chapter five problem, like the shortest path, which way to go. The decision is which way to go, but if you translate it to, okay, there are so many ways, whether we should go to A, if we go A, then we will not go to B, we'll not go through C. So, will be one of the road will be chosen, so that's kind of like a one value, and the other not, not chosen will be zero value. So, if uh, a problem indicates, say, okay, which one to choose, or whether to choose this one, to me, it's kind of like, okay, you need to use the binary variable. It's a, it's a zero one decision, choose this or not. Okay, but uh, um, as you go through more problems, you kind of like de develop that uh, insight. So the more problem you see, you develop that sense. You go, okay, I need to use this method. Or which method is easier. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple ways of solving problems, but uh, for certain problems, uh, um, I would say a certain way will be much easier, like, uh, like in this one. The binary will be much easier. Okay, and like the equipment replacement problem. Um, that problem, if we introduce that in chapter six, we can solve it in a different way. But using the network problem method will be much easier. Multiple ways will, will get the same solution.